issued a one day make challenge and I'd like to participate. Um, I originally thought I wasn't going to because making things in one day is quite difficult when you have chronic pain and fatigue issues. Um, but I saw So Loud's very entertaining take on the project and I just had to participate. Um, and so I thought I'd adapt it for my own ability levels because that's what you do when you're disabled. And so here we are. Um, what does adapting the project mean? It means that I'm making a child's gown. Um, I'm specifically, nope, wrong one. What are these papers? Making the Mill Farm Child's Gown and Child and Girl's Gown project in a size um, 10 11 for my daughter, um, who's been watching me make fun things and wants to participate. Um, and it's a project I already have cut out and ready to go, so most of the prep work is done um, so that I can just kind of roll with it. Um, I'm going to be machine sewing most of it and only hand finishing the end bits. So the fabric I'm using is also kind of a stash busting thing. I was given most of it from a friend I work with a few years ago um, in a bag with yarn and other odds and ends. I have just enough to do this project. So I have bodice already cut out and interfaced um, and then pinned together. I haven't actually sew sewn the, 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 the sewn the seams together yet. Um, this is the lining, which has also been cut out and re it's ready to go. This is a random piece of cloth that I'm not using and I don't know why it's here. Okay, um, I already have the, sil the sleeves cut out and stitched together. I handed them the other night when I was watching TV just because I wanted something to have to do with my hands. Um, I very, very simply backstitched, clipped and felled them down and then did a simple gold hem. So, the next challenge and the next piece I'm going to be working on is the skirt. Um, so, because it was given to me, I didn't have enough fabric to meet the required width to, for, that they recommend. They want three times the length of your leg, which for my daughter is 34 inches, which according to whatever computation that I made and wrote down here somewhere, they're gone. Whatever. It's three times 34 is <laughs> how wide I needed I think it was 117 inches. Um, so this, so the fabric was 45 inches wide, so that's that, plus 20, or 30, this is 30. Yes, 30, so that's 70. Why do I feel like that's 90? We're going to have to measure that again. I'll show you that in a bit once I'm done kind of introing things. Anyway, the point is, I need to seam on two more panels. Um, the tricky bit is that these panels need to go in the back because <laughs> the pattern is going the other way. Um, I just don't have the fabric to, to do it otherwise and as everyone says, piecing is period and I have a hard time imagining that any mother trying to make a gown for her daughter out of bits and pieces would really be too fussed if the pattern went the other way. Um, the, pa the fabric I'm using is just quilting cotton. It is but it does have that kind of two-tone color, limited palette look that seems to be 18th century sort of accurate. Sort of accurate. It's for my daughter. Um, I'm also meant to put boning in it. I'm going to use zip ties because again, she's nine and she's going to outgrow it at some point. Um, and when you're making things for people who outgrow things, um, you don't always put all the good stuff in them. Um, and then I have the lining, which I believe started life as a bed sheet. Um, but anyway, it's a nice sturdy white cotton, which will make a good lining for the body. For the bodice, which again is going to have boning in it, which is the only reason I actually bothered lining it. I was supposed to line the sleeves too, and I just didn't, and I'm not lining anything else. So, we are off to the races. Let's do this. Special, uh, no! I'm trying to record the sound separately and I have utterly failed and I just cannot even at this point. So that's that. Sorry. You're gonna have to put up with the bad sound from the fact that my camera is across the room and my fan is going. But it's like 30 degrees out today so you get the fan. And apparently my dog barking. Uh, what is it? Like real life vlogging. <sighs> Alright, let's do this. My dog is outside barking and everything because that is apparently what he considers to be his purpose in life. 
so I apologize for the dog barking in the background. press as you go doesn't actually mean after you stitch the dang thing together but you know before while it's still wrinkled from living in a garbage bag for half a year I don't know what that is what else? put six back on I'm listening to that in the car while I drive my kids back and forth lately and yeah I'm enjoying it quite a bit Okay, so we have the bodice, and I'm going to seam together the straps. Let's go to the machine. You ready? Here we go. Sound effects are important. Okay, so now that I have stitched all the shoulders together, I'm putting right sides to right sides, and we're going to do neckline and armholes. you've done the pleating to close up the back, but because I want to make sure that this big nice to pleat this skirt onto the bodice 
but I think my daughter must just have very long legs because the measurement they gave me is incredibly too big to do that. Like it just doesn't fit. So now I'm, I've taken one of the panels I spent all that time sewing on off and I'm trying to figure out if I have to take more off. And I think whatever I do, I'm just gonna French seam what's left. Um, it's about seven o'clock. I'm very, very tired at this point. Um, I was really, really hoping in the next hour or so to be done with the like pressing and all that and just have the uh, eyelets left to do because I can do those kind of from bed. and I literally just could not pleat any smaller so it's just gonna have to come off um, I don't know maybe my daughter just has very 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 long legs Excuse my finger, my thimble is made of brass and turns my finger green because that's sensible. There's the back, has a little bit of boning in it. I don't actually know what all I've managed to film today because sometimes I've looked down and the camera's been off, so we will find out if this makes an actual story. I, it is 10.30 and I need to shower and get ready for work tomorrow. I'm not gonna do the eyelets tonight. We're gonna call it good. It's a mostly day make. I'll still show you how I do the the uh, eyelets, but that's a project for tomorrow. So yeah, I made most of a dress in a day. We'll call it good. Uh, last night, I got the skirt all sewed on. Got the placket hemmed. And when I got home from work today, I started... Um, Flipping and turning under the armhole. I only got one done. The other one still looks like that. And I'm now, because, you know, God forbid we do things in order, working on eyelet holes. So I've got two done. I'm going to show you how we do it. We take our awl. This is not a tailor's awl. This is the awl I've, that came in a toolbox. But it has a pointy end. It's made of metal, and it's about the right size, so I'm not that fussed. Again, we're trying to not break the fabric but um, I've never had much luck with that something always does get broken so I'm going to take the neatest part about multiple layers and eyelets is that you can kind of take your thread and bury the knot up and in, inside oops apparently my knot is too small to be considered a knot awesome this is how I was taught to make knots as a child when I was like sewing on brownie badges it doesn't always work, but it is the thing I know how to do. And I like to do the buttonhole stitch and then make sure that that edge and that little like nibbly bit ends up in the middle of the eyelet. I don't know why, I just find they sit better that way. I just totally failed at that. Anyway, yeah. Okay, last one on this side. I cannot peek through the hole, but yeah. I have no idea if you can see this or not because I have no idea if it's focusing or not. All right, so I'm just finishing up. Oh, this is not standing up. All right, so I'm just finishing up the, covering up the armhole. So I've trimmed down the uh, outside fabric and rolled the thicker, um, lining fabric around it and I'm just whipping it down. It actually looks really nice. Let's look at the other one. It's kind of nice that it looks. I'm very impressed with it. 
and we're done. I just put a shoelace in the back for right now, but see all my nice, beautiful little eyelets. Yeah, we've got a bit of a issue here, but let's see. So yeah, I did it. I'll dress in a day. That is my weird bunch of pleats that are meant to be like grow pleats. I think I did my measurement wrong on this, to be honest, which sucks. I had started this thinking that my daughter's legs were 34 inches long. Then I stopped and thought about it and realized that's a very long woman's inseam length, which means no, 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 she, her, her legs are not that long. 24. It must have been 24, which also explains why the skirt was so big that it wouldn't fit into anyway. Yeah, so I caused my own issues. I should probably cut some of these off and just leave the hem, but meh. Okay. Anyway, it's a nine. I've been working on this for the last couple of hours. So, I mean, I did still did less than eight hours work on it. I just didn't do it all in one day. Why we're staring at that, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna turn the camera around. So yeah, making a dress in a day. It's exhausting. Don't do that. It's a bad idea. Ah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so, I mean, it's not perfect, but my daughter's really gonna like it, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching me goof around <laughs> trying to make it, and I suppose at some point I'm going to have to plug this camera into my computer and see how much of the footage I tried to film actually got filmed. Oh, excuse me. Anyway, talk to you later, friends. Bye-bye.